I'm working on my weekend shipping and I thought I would jump back in with a chatty work with me on, I don't know, a topic that's maybe therapeutic for me, <laughs> which is why I'm no longer a full-time reseller and why I probably will never be a full-time reseller again. So if that sounds interesting to you, I've got my timer here that I am going to start. Uh, so I'm going to count down five, four, three, two, one, let's go. All right. So I've got a big bag down here shipping. And, um, if you have watched this channel for any amount of time in the last year, you probably know that I have been making some, po some changes and I think they're positive for me in, um, revenue streams or hopeful revenue streams, I should say. And it is now official. I now have three very real revenue streams. It's not just an idea in my head. Um, because I got my real estate license a year ago and I got it with the intention that if I could get to the point where I spend about a third of my work time with reselling, about a third of my work time with my three different YouTube channels, and about a third of my work time with real estate, I was optimistic that maybe I could get to a point, maybe in two, three years, where I have X amount of dollars coming from each. And so if one decides to tank, let's say I got kicked off eBay or something, or maybe I quit Poshmark because I was fed up, or maybe I decided I can't do YouTube anymore. I'm not saying that, but who knows what happens in the future where maybe I just, something happens to one of my revenue streams. I still have two solid revenue streams that can pay my bills, put into savings, et cetera. And also, you know, for me, I am a one uh, income household. So I own a home, I own a car, that should be paid off in about a year. Uh, my house will not be paid on the top in here, but, um, I, I don't have, I don't have any security of any other income to pay my bills. And fortunately I don't really have too many. I mean, I have like standard, you know, utility, my mortgage, my car payment, but fortunately I don't really have much past that. I paid off my student loans a few years ago and I don't have any debt, um, which I'm think, I mean, besides <laughs> besides my mortgage and my car payment. But outside of that, I don't have any credit card debt, um, which I'm, I'm thankful for. So why did I, when did I start considering myself a part-time reseller again? So I stopped saying I was a full-time reseller over a year ago, approximately the time when I started working on getting my real estate license. And while that process is just more tedious than anything, I mean, I went to college for four, not four years, way more years, but a four year degree, um, it probably took me nine, 10 years to finish, but I spent a lot of time with that spending four months on some online classes for real estate license. And the, the cost involved with a real estate license is significantly less than what I paid for my college degree, but it's also just very tedious when I'm already trying to do reselling and YouTube to pay my normal bills. And it's kind of that self-discipline, you know? So, when I started, when I decided I was going to get my real estate license, um, and if you don't know the backstory of that, I thought of the idea, not because I want to be a full-time real estate agent, um, because I don't, never, <laughs> I don't have any intention of that, but because when COVID hit, and on, on my second channel, before it was a camping channel, it was a vlog channel, and I asked my old real estate agent who helped me purchase this home, um, if he would help me with content during COVID when I wasn't really leaving my house much and show me some homes. And what I told him was, if you show, if we show some, a few homes in the area, maybe someone will see my video and they'll contact you because you're a real estate agent. Sure enough, he had one guy who contacted him and he got one sale off of this. I think technically I did two, two videos with him. It feels like ages ago, but, uh, but anyways, with a short amount of time that he spent with me, letting me do a video, he got a home sale. And the commission on home sales is usually between two to 3% of the purchase price. And it depends on what's in the contract. And it can be a pretty significant payout for the time. So I, during COVID, kind of was thinking, 
why don't I just get my real estate license, start a third channel, put some content out there on this area that not many people can learn about because when I moved here, I had a hard time reading up about it. There's just, it's a rural area. They don't really push like a marketing of this area. Um, and I think there's a lot of people here that kind of want to keep it a hidden secret. And I just look at it as I was able to afford a home in California and that would not have happened in San Francisco for me or even in LA for me. And I want more people to know that this is a great area to live in. And so that was the backstory of why I got my real estate license. And so go back 16 months when I started my real estate classes, I had this idea and I knew I would give myself about two years. And if I didn't get any home sales in that two, two year period, I would hold on to my license I wouldn't pay the annual fees, but I would hold on to my license and just move on. Because I think for me, with YouTube, with reselling, for me, what's helpful is to know that I'm giving myself a time frame to try and see if it's it's a success, meaning it's worth my time. But if it doesn't pan out, I'm not going to keep pushing something that's not going to work out. I did the same thing with YouTube. Um, I didn't know if YouTube was going to work for me. I didn't know if anyone would watch. And so I went in, if, if I can't get monetized in six months, I'm going to drop YouTube. It's not worth my time if I'm not making any money after six months. So that's helpful for me. Not everyone's the same. Some people do things just for fun. But for me, I, I, I really, if it's a revenue stream and I want it to be a revenue stream um, and I'm going to spend time on it and it's not just for fun, uh, then I need to see some results at a certain point. So I stopped saying officially that I was a full-time reseller when that happened because between getting my real estate license, working on the two, but then soon to be three YouTube channels, um, and then reselling as well. So reselling YouTube and then the real estate classes, I realized I wasn't spending 40 hours a week on reselling and I was going in a direction or I was trying to go in a direction that made sense for me, that would make me happier, hopefully, by having more balance, by not being so stressed about, are my sales good this month? Am I finding any good stuff at thrift stores? Um, it's just, I think I applaud anyone out there who just loves and continues to do full-time reselling without YouTube, without real estate, without any of that, and they pay all their bills with reselling. I know some people, I'm constantly in awe that they can do that. I get bored easily. I have always had jobs that have allowed me to work on a lot of different projects. And so I, I just know that about my personality. I cannot do the same job every day for 30 years. Um, but some people that's where they're comfortable. So I think it's just understanding your personality type, what you thrive in. For me, I tend to thrive in a little bit of chaos. Um, and it, I can always go back and get a regular job. I always knew that doing all of this, that I have work experience. Um, I do have a degree that allows me to apply for more, even though that's not a necessary thing for everyone or every job. It's just a nice comfort for me. And I worked hard for it. <laughs> Let's get real. So uh, why, why did I... Some people could say like, oh, you could just do wholesale, you could get some employees and you could make more with reselling. You could do a lot of things to make more with reselling. For me, I never wanted to have employees, like real employees, because I did a lot of managing people in my career before. And while I like people, um, just the constant negativity <laughs> um, with managing people and the constant stress of like, people aren't doing their job and now you have to kind of motivate them or now you have to you know, give them some sort of corrective conversation to hopefully motivate them and being in meetings all the time and having to answer for your employees and having, it's just, it's just not something I enjoyed. So I didn't want to create a business where I had a whole bunch of employees. So for me, success in reselling was never to get a, a, a warehouse, to have employees. That was never in my plan. That was never going to happen. And if you want something like that, yeah, you could probably make more money than I was with reselling. But for me, just a an individual person who lives two hours from any decent thrift store, um, it, it it was hard for me with reselling, and I didn't I wasn't excited about wholesale. That just to me it seems like I'm just a robot just processing stuff. I could go get a processing job and a minimum wage job at a 
you know, anywhere else. Um, it just wasn't, it wasn't interesting to me and it wasn't what I was going for. Now I, so that's kind of a little bit of the backstory. I didn't like the direction that I was seeing myself going with possible burnout with reselling all the time and the stress and anxiety of worrying about bills, not getting any big bonus payment to help pay for some of my home expenses. Um, you know, I've got plans for making some improvements. I want to go on a trip hopefully next year um, because I used to love international travel. And it's just hard when you're basically going sale by sale to pay your bills. It's just hard to build a substantial amount of money quickly. So that's why I don't, don't think I was headed in a positive path with full-time reselling. But what I am thankful for is getting into full-time reselling, taking that leap from my full-time, very well-paid job, put me in a position to start getting a little scrappy. What I mean by that is it started getting me comfortable with the uncomfortable feeling of not having a steady paycheck, which I'm so thankful for because that was really hard. Benefits, health benefits, retirement funds, um, you know, all of the things like taxes being self-employed versus, you know, having someone just process your, like pull out your taxes every month for you. I got very comfortable with all that uncomfortable stuff. Also, I just keep looking at the camera and I keep seeing a bumblebee. I don't know why I'm wearing black and yellow today, but every time I see an outfit like this, I just think like if I just add the little things where it's like the antenna with the, you know, bumblebee thing, antenna, is that what they are? Anyways, I look like a bumblebee today, whatever. <laughs> um, so... I, I, I just think that if I continued on the path that I was going, where everything was centered around, around reselling, finding good stuff, having good sales, because even my main YouTube channel is technically revolved around reselling, I just knew I was going to burn out and be super unhappy and all of that stuff. So I'm thankful for it, it pushing me into this uncomfortable world of being self-employed because I've learned a lot and I'm more comfortable here, but I am, I learned that that is not what's going to make me happy for many reasons, but I will always be a reseller because I love the thrill of the hunt. I love escaping at times. Like I've had some stressful days where I've had to just wait. And the best way to go and just wait something out is in a thrift store when you're just distracted by looking for something good and you know, the hangers, that's what I'm doing. <laughs> so, um, so what are some other reasons why I'm no longer full time? I was burning the candle at both ends. So I've talked a lot about productivity in the last year and I've really tried and I'm going to continue to make improvements because I have to, because I'm trying to juggle quite a bit. I have to be productive with my time. But what I found myself was I was telling myself I was working 70, 80 hours a week when in reality, 40 of that was wasted time talking to people on Instagram, checking Instagram stories, watching YouTube videos and not doing anything else at the same time, trying to do things at the same time, which for me doesn't always pan out. Um, so I was burning the candle at both ends. I just never felt like I was getting any time off. Again, this is kind of before 16 months ago. And so I needed to make some positive changes. So I have made a lot of positive changes. I forced myself to take time off. Um, and it's really great for me <laughs> um, because I don't think this hustle culture is realistic for most people in the long term. Um, and I think it's a disservice for people to say, I work a full-time job and then I'm over here reselling full-time and then I do YouTube full-time. And it's like, do you have time with family and friends? <laughs> do you take some walks in the park uh, at the mountain? Like to me, it's just, it creates a little bit of toxicity. Is that the, the way you say it? Around being self-employed, that it has to be that psychotic. And it doesn't have to be. It just means that you have to be disciplined to create structure and boundaries and be realistic, you know? So for me, being realistic was I was never gonna be someone that was gonna source more than one day a week. I don't have it in me to drive down to LA for a long thrifting day more than one day a week because the cost of gas, the time, the exhaustion. If I leave my house at 6 p.m. or 6 a.m. and I get home at you know 9 p.m. or 10 p.m., that is a really long day that I need to recover from. So I was trying to avoid burning the candle at both ends. And with real estate, there's no guarantee. In fact, it's taken me a year to have 
one home sale. Now I've worked fairly part time with re with real estate. Um, it it has not been. I mean, it's basically you get I get random phone calls from people who find me on YouTube, and uh, I've I've shown ho homes to a variety of people, uh, and I have meetings with my office and my team and. You know, there's that kind of stuff. But for the most part, it's been pretty mellow up until the last couple months when I really had an influx of serious buyers. So right now I just closed one escrow and I have another escrow that just opened same day yesterday. So um, by the end of this year, I'll have two home sales. And uh, that's great, in my opinion, for a first year of real estate, considering I don't know anyone that lives here. Um, this is all just people that contact me from my third YouTube channel. Um, another reason that I was starting to dislike full-time reselling is I love the reselling community. I've, I have so many friends that I talk to almost every day <laughs> that are resellers from all over the country. Um, and, and even some, you know, all over the world. So I love the community, but I feel like in the last couple of years, there's been some low points of the community. And I just sat there feeling like I was walking on eggshells. Am I gonna upset someone? Is there gonna be a whole bunch of negativity coming my way? Why are people airing out all of this? I don't like everyone in the reselling community. I don't like everything that everyone does in the reselling community. I disagree with certain things that people have done or continue to do, but that's a small percentage of people. And me talking about it or focusing on it is just a waste of my time, personally. So while I feel bad that there are people that follow and subscribe to people who I think are um, just questionable morals and ethics, and I personally don't think are, they might have some good advice around reselling, but they, they just aren't someone I trust. I'm just going to let people follow whoever they want. <laughs> it's not up to me. Hopefully I can just do my part in just trying to be transparent and honest and show my flaws and my mistakes while also showing, hey, I have learned some stuff and I'm doing some stuff okay too. Um, and I don't think you need to like share everything about your business, but I do appreciate when people share the pros and the cons, that reselling is not all that it's worked up to be, made out to be. I don't know the expression. Um, it's a lot of hard work. It's easy to burn out. It's monotonous. I mean, it just starts getting into this every day is the same, you know, or every week is the same. And I think a lot of people start it getting excited. Oh, I don't have a boss and oh, I can shop for a living. And then they realize it's not all it's cracked up to be cracked up to be. <laughs> that's the word. So that's just my own personal take on it. Um, I'm going to pause here and we're going to fast forward to after I finish my shipping when I make lunch to mention the sponsor of today's video, which is my absolute favorite. It is Green Chef. So let's see what I'm making for lunch. So today for lunch, I'm making one of my absolute favorite Green Chef meals, which is the chicken with basil pastu. I think that's how you say it. Uh, but it's no surprise. I know I've mentioned Green Chef in the past, why I love them. And yes, I did pay for Green Chef before they ever sponsored me. Uh, but I love them for a variety of reasons, one of them being the variety. They have 30 weekly choices, and they also have options for every lifestyle, which includes keto, paleo, vegan, vegetarian, fast and fit, Mediterranean, and gluten free. I tend to choose a lot of Mediterranean meals, but I get bored easily. So I tend to mix things up every week, which I love. The other main reason I love it is going to be no surprise. It saves me a lot of time by taking care of all the meal planning, the grocery shopping, and most of the prep work. But I still get to take a quick break on a busy day and cook my meal so it's nice and warm and fresh. And I really appreciate that break each day. If you're new here and you don't know what Green Chef is, Green Chef is a CCOF certified organic company. And I've been cooking in Green Chef for a year and getting this delivered to my doorstep is always a highlight each week. So if you haven't tried Green Chef yet, you can definitely use my code, which is common tags 599 to get $5.99 per meal on your first box, plus free shipping on your bo first box. So you can go to greenchef.com for more details. All right, finished product. <laughs> I love this meal. It just, I don't know. It's so warm and cozy. It's perfect for cold days, which today's cold. It's got a little bit of sweetness with the dates. It's got artichokes, a little bit of fennel. It's got the shard. 
so you've got my greens and I just I don't know I mean I could make chicken and rice but not like this that's for sure thank you green chef for sponsoring another video I'm gonna chow down and get back to work okay back to my favorite activity lint rolling um so what is my current situation look like what does it look like for the last year 16 months and how do I see reselling fit into my life for moving forward so again, reselling will still pay, pay bills. Reselling and YouTube are what pay, pays my bills. Um, YouTube is ad revenue from Google. It is also sponsorships. I take it very seriously to only work with companies I have paid for or I genuinely use. Um, so <laughs> Green Chef, I have started paying for them before they ever sponsored me. And I will continue to work with them for as long as they will work with me because I genuinely love their product. So between those two, uh, ad revenue and sponsorships, I'm doing okay with YouTube, but that was never a guarantee. It was gradual. It really didn't become, uh, anything worthwhile until about the last year, um, year or year and a half, but I'm very thankful to have reselling and YouTube be able to cover the cost of my living expenses. And I'm pretty modest, or not modest, but I'm pretty frugal. Um, because I live in a rural area, I don't eat out a lot. I usually eat out once, maybe twice a week. Um, like when I go out thrifting, obviously I'm in LA, I'm, I'm not packing a lunch, I'm going in and out, you know, that type of stuff, getting a sandwich. Um, and you know, I might go out a couple times a month with friends like to eat, but for the most part, I cook most of my meals at home. I don't go out to a lot of like, whatever. So I mainly just have my bills um, and just little things here and there with family and friends. But I think that right now, how it's been for a while, when I actually kind of calculate the amount of work I'm doing for reselling, it's genu genuinely or generally, not genuinely, generally about one day thrifting each week. Um, and that's usually a full day. Sometimes I cut things short um, and sometimes I'll stay and like go and like sit down for dinner and like just kind of have a little bit of a social time in LA. But for the most part, it's, it's a long thrift day. And then on top of that, when I add up the time the rest of the week on time spent with reselling, it's about two more full days. Full days being eight to 10 hours. Um, obviously most of my days are a combination of two or three things. So I don't, I don't have a lot of days where I can just like, I'm just doing reselling today. It just doesn't work that way. Especially when you're in escrow on houses and phone calls come up. Like right now I've got my, my phone on airplane mode, but I'm expecting a call for real estate. So, you know, when I finish this, I'll get caught up with them. But, uh, that's pretty much, it's basically three days a week that I'm working on reselling. And it's usually about one full day a week on YouTube. That's an, any number of things, the filming, the editing, um, monitoring comments. Um, and again, I technically have three channels, so I'm not, I haven't been that great being consistent on all three with all this change. The camping channel, my second channel is kind of more for fun, but I do like sharing those adventures because I do want more people to get out and camp if they want to. Um, so, gotta keep going because this is truly multitasking for me. Um, so that's kind of what my, my life currently looks like. Um, how do I see things changing? So. I just closed escrow on a house yesterday. I have another escrow that just opened yesterday. So for the next month approximately, I'll be managing that. I have two other serious clients that I have been showing homes to for the last couple months off and on. When people are out of town, it doesn't happen overnight. They have to be able to schedule a day to come. So I'm confident that those two will work out into home sales, if not by this going into escrow anytime this year, definitely in the early part of the year. And I get, you know, messages, two to three new people contacting me each week. So I'm optimistic that next year, hopefully I'll be able to double what I was able to do this year. The dog is now drinking water. Boo, do you want to say hello after you drink water? Do you want to wait until the end of the video when we update? Um, so my goal next year, my goal this year, just in general, was just have one home sale because so many people put pressure like, oh, it has to happen overnight. It doesn't. Um, people are finding me, which is great. 
I am working well with people in my community on escrow teams with other agents. I'm trying to stay on top of that stuff. Um, but if I could double what I did this year, and just for perspective, these two home sales, if this next one goes through, I will make more in real estate this year in the last couple months than I did all in Poshmark all year. Um, after fees on both sides, <laughs> after removing cost of goods, uh, before taxes. But I mean, I've got to pay taxes on both sides. So real estate has potential, but I also don't want that to be a stressor either. Um, I don't want to be a slave to my phone 24 seven, which is kind of what real estate is. <laughs> it's you could be getting calls from multiple people in a transaction. Plus you're getting calls from new people um, left and right. It's just calls and emails and just 24 seven, 365 days a week, a week, <laughs> 365 days a year. That's how it feels. Obviously I can go camping, which, you know, I'm trying to carve out that time. I can go for a hike in a non cell area so I can kind of get a break. And, and obviously they're not calling that much, but it just feels like it's just nonstop. So I don't want that. I, if I don't know, I'm, I'm very like torn. So without focusing too much on the real estate stuff, cause I know not everyone cares about that. I, if real estate, let's say I had three escrows in one month, which is a lot. It's a lot of juggling. It's a lot of paperwork. It's a lot of communication with multiple people. If I had that happen, I, it would affect me with how much I could list each month. And I might see, I'm, I'm kind of just seeing how this next year plays out. If this next year, if I double what I'm doing with what I did this year, so if I get approximately 3 million in sales next year versus the 1.5 million in, in sales this year, fingers crossed this escrow goes through smoothly, um, then, and that, I'm only saying millions as opposed to houses because it could be a $300,000 house or a million dollar house and it's very, you know, whatever. But if I were able to do that next year, I might take some of that and just hire someone because I'll have more cushion and savings. Um, and I might hire someone just to take photos for me. It'll be very part time, like five or six hours a week. Um, but that'll help, you know, that'll just be one thing off my plate. There's a lot of things that I could do in all of it that could help save a little bit of time. Um, you know, I could hire someone to clean my house. <laughs> I mean, that seems so silly, but I live here. It's not a huge house, but it's still, I have to clean. I've got a dog that sheds everywhere. Um, and I do like a clean, organized space. So I could pay someone every couple weeks or every month just to come in and do a good deep cleaning. And then that's a whole day of cleaning because that's how I feel like it takes me. Uh, that's a whole day that I get back, you know? So there are things that I could do. I could get a virtual assistant. I'm not sure I really need that. I don't think I would want anyone to list for me because I'm just, there's just too many errors that could happen. And, and I actually don't mind that process. I don't mind any process of reselling. It's just, I'm trying to think ahead in this next year. If, if real estate continues to pick up, I don't want to turn people away. Um, and it would be wonderful if in a few years I was having approximately 10 to 12 sales a year, real estate sales. Uh, but I don't want to give up reselling or YouTube. So I would have, I would just have to figure out ways to get help because it's just not manageable. <laughs> um, it's just not with, with healthy work-life balance. And so that's, that's kind of where I'm at with like my thought process of moving forward. I'm happy that I took the leap with YouTube. It worked out for me, but I had a six month exit strategy. I'm happy that real estate seems to be working out for me. If I could get two home sales by the end of this year, that's double what I was hoping for. And it could continue to just move forward because people could refer me. People could continue to find me on YouTube. If I have a good reputation working with other agents, like they'll want to work with me, that type of stuff. So I'm, I'm optimistic that these two things are good for me but all of it really could just tank one day. So that's where I think having multiple revenue streams helps me sleep at night because I can still pay my bills even if one of the revenue streams goes away. So what else do I have on here? Um, I think that's pretty much it on like what I'm currently doing and what I plan to do. I have thought about, well, if it gets too busy, maybe I could just wipe out the thrifting day 
and get some wholesale or get some, you know, like more thread up boxes. I am thinking, I, I said I would never do a thread up box that's a men's box again, but I am thinking maybe I, during this kind of holiday time, could get a couple thread up boxes. I don't know if you guys want me to do a couple, but um, just for fun and to maybe get a little bit of product. I know it's a risk. I don't recommend it <laughs> for like serious sourcing. But you, I usually can find stuff to sell and I usually do make my money back. I still have not made my money back on that men's that last men's box. Um, so again, that's just because that they mark up that box. But um, yeah, so I'm trying to just think. I do like selling pre-owned. That's why I don't like wholesale. Um, I just think it contributes for me. It just contributes to new product being produced because they have those ways to get rid of it. I don't mind selling something new that I find at a thrift store because it just means someone bought it, <laughs> sat in their closet and for the most part. And um, so I have no interest in wholesale. I don't know. So we'll see. I, I'm, I'm trying to be realistic. I don't want to give up the thrill of the hunt because that's, it's fun. It's not fun every day. I wouldn't want to thrift every day, but it is fun one day a week to get out of my house to go see if I can find anything good. And also just, you know, like I like going down to LA because I do live in a rural community. So it is nice to be able to go and have a, a day around people uh, every once in a while. So, and I, I guess maybe that's it is I, maybe I could just, I don't know. I know that I tried that other box. What was that company called? They were terrible too. I just think that that's the problem is I don't think any company is really going to be a guarantee for product. And for me, getting product is always going to be the hardest. So I could hire someone, but if they don't have anything to list, then it's kind of worthless. So I'm just trying to navigate that space. And obviously, I'm sure some of you guys will leave suggestions down below. And um, uh, but, you know, even if I cut down, like I have almost 16, I have 1600 items listed on eBay and 1550 on Poshmark. The reason there's a discrepancy is I do have some hard goods on eBay. Also, I don't know, sometimes <laughs> sometimes things get lost. Do you guys ever have that happen? So, um, sorry, I'm walking away from the, so that's, that's basically, I am also trying not to burn out on YouTube. I took a couple weeks off. It was like 12 days off or something, 13 days off uh, a couple weeks ago. And it was partly because I didn't have any commitments with any companies. And I was just really going to take that break of just chill for a second. Um, and it was really nice. But, you know, YouTube, creating content, being on camera, um, the comments aren't that bad. I mean, yeah, there's some negative comments out there. But I think, yeah, I, you know, I just get used to most of it. It just doesn't really phase me. Um, but I, I don't want to burn out on YouTube either. So, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to figure out, okay, I think I can at least do four videos a month here on this channel, four to five, which would be approximately one per week. I think that's completely manageable. And I think that's kind of what I'm aiming for right now, because honestly, you know, if, if I try to do any more, like I was more in the six to seven range for the last couple years, if I try to do more than that, it's just, yeah, it's just, it's not it's not worth it for me. Um, but yeah, so chatty work with me's bins hauls, it just seems like those are kind of the, the types that you guys seem to enjoy. And I am so thankful for YouTube. And especially when things are exciting or things are not, not so great. Just some of the, the comments that I get from, um, uh, YouTube comments and Instagram comments. Like yesterday, I was so excited to close this house. And my initial thought was, oh, I wish I could call my dad. And I posted something on my Instagram. And, you know, that's, I, I don't, every day I think about him. It's not to get like emotional. Again, because obviously time goes on. Um, but, you know, if something exciting happens and it's like, oh, I would just, I would love to share it with him. But I shared something on my Instagram. And of course, it's just so nice to just get a little love at times when it's like a happy, but also it's a happy day. Um, but yeah, so I, I'm so thankful for YouTube and just the people that pop up in the comments and I recognize names and, you know, it's... It's just, it is a really great space, um, but I don't want to burn out on it because I think that's really easy to do. So, um, so yeah, that's the moral of the story. I'm trying not to burn out on things and still pay my bills. <laughs> so also, um, I'm trying to keep an eye on the time. Uh, 
I will talk a little bit more about real estate, what I plan to do with that money, how I'm kind of thinking about things with that, like from a personal standpoint. If you guys are curious, I'll also talk about the dog, update you with her. She's over there snoozing. Can you see her? You can see a little bit of her. That's her back right there. <laughs> she likes that little sunny spot during the day um, or this time of day, I should say. But uh, yeah, so do I think full-time reselling is good for anyone? I think there's a lot of people out there that don't want to really think too much about things and you can create a fairly consistent life of getting a routine of going to the thrift store every day or every couple days or once a week and you just get in that routine and you list the same amount each week approximately and you just get in that routine and I think there are a lot of people out there who just are comfortable with routines. So I feel like I should sit. Um, so. I think reselling full-time can work for some people. It does work for some people. To make the money that I would feel most comfortable with as a solo income person, yes, I live in California, but it's much more affordable here with cost of living uh, where I, in, in my town. But I think that I would have to scale to have employees to make a decent amount. I just think that for me, listing the quantity just by myself to try and get, you know, after fees, um, after cost of goods to make a decent amount. And for me, I was always hoping to get back to where I was making, I was making six figures at my previous job. So my last couple jobs. So, you know, for me, uh, that was kind of always my goal was, could I get back there? And it's highly possible. There are people that do that with reselling alone, but it's just, it, for me, not being able to source easily, not wanting employees, that wasn't going to be something that worked out for me. So it can work out for other people. Um, but again, just because someone says they're a six-figure reseller doesn't mean they're good at reselling, doesn't mean they have good advice. And just because someone only sells part-time doesn't mean they don't have the best advice. That's just my own take. Again, we're all probably trying to carve out a reselling journey for ourselves, and it's probably going to look a little different for everyone. And for me, moving forward, it will be part-time, meaning less than 40 hours a week. Yes, it's contributing to paying some of my bills, but it's not paying all my bills. And, and I've got other things going on. So do I think YouTube is good for anyone? I've talked about this. I'll briefly touch on it. I don't think it is for everyone. I don't think it's for most people for two reasons. One, sanity. It's, it's hard getting a lot of feedback on your life from people on the internet. It's just, it's a really strange thing. You get used to it to a degree. Oh man, there are two tiny holes in this. So I'm going to have to contact that person. Um, I, I don't get shaken up about comments much anymore. Um, I think I get more upset when I see it happening to some of my friends, but, uh, I just, it's, it's weird. It's also for me, the, the weird, weirdest part of having a reselling YouTube channel is just going out and feeling like you're shared out a lot. And obviously that has been more of an issue in the last year to two years, but, um, I can't really go out to a thrift store and just kind of be hidden. Um, there are some days that no one, no one knows I'm, no one cares, <laughs> but it's, it's a little weird. Like I don't, I don't, I, I don't like going to the bins for long days anymore because I just kind of get, it's just weird being stared at. <laughs> and that's why I always like when people say hi, because then I'm like, okay, they're not just staring at me. Like, do I have something in my face? Cause you don't know if that's it. Are they staring at you cause they know you from YouTube or are they staring at you cause you have something on your face? Like it's a very strange feeling, but I'm, I'm thankful for everyone that comes up and says hello because then it's not the just staring. Uh, but it's also, you know, it, it's, yeah, it, it's just, it's, it's, it's a weird dynamic. I don't know any other way of putting it. It's strange. It's not me complaining. It's just, I don't think, if I knew that I wouldn't be able to go hide at a thrift store, I don't, I don't know if I would have jumped on YouTube. Because um, even some employees or managers, they'll recognize me. And then I'm like, oh, are they watching what I pick up? <laughs> Not that I care. Um, every store around here marks things up and they've got to do what they got to do to pay their employees and pay their rent. So to each their own. But um, so YouTube, I think the majority of the people that start want it to take off, have great ambitions, but then realize that it's a lot of 
slow numbers in the beginning for most people. Um, it's some of the negative comments and feedback um, or unsolicited feedback. That's my favorite. Uh, and it's also probably not going to produce a lot of money in the beginning. And so you really have to put in a lot of work for most people um, to really get any decent payout. And I'm happy that I've stayed consistent, but it is hard at times. Um, the longest I've gone is the 12 or 13 days. I've done that like three times in four years. And actually, I think I'm like right at my year mark. I think mid-November was when I published my first YouTube video. So it's been four years on YouTube. And I think I've taken three small breaks of less than two weeks each um, from posting a video. And it's consistency can be hard at times because sometimes you just want a break. So I don't think the majority of people with YouTube will make the money that makes the time worth it and the time invested. That's just me. Um, and I think there's also other things that take less time that, I don't know. I mean, Instagram, you can now do reels if you have a decent following there and you can make money there. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, I say anyone should try anything that they think that they want to do or that would make them happy or be another revenue stream. I think it's just be realistic with YouTube that have an end goal, like have an end date if it's not working out. Um, or just realize that it's you're not doing it for money and it is simply for fun. Some people like editing and that kind of stuff. So it really is just kind of a hobby. But for me, that was never the case. YouTube has been hard for me to learn because I'm, I'm not a tech type of person. I'm not a patient person when it comes to that kind of stuff. Um, and then lastly, do I think real estate is good for anyone? Um, yes and no. So I've actually gotten quite a, quite a few of you guys have sent me comments. Either you used to do real estate, you currently do real estate, you're thinking about real estate, you bought a house and had a real estate agent, you have some thoughts. People have thoughts on real estate agents. The people that have either done it, tried it, or currently do it, I've, I've read some interesting things, but the most common thing I've read from comments is people saying that they tried it, they went through the whole process, and then they stopped doing it after a year or two because they didn't like cold calls. They didn't like door knocking. Like those are old school ways of, you know, getting new clients, but they couldn't find clients. And um, also, like I said, the constant communication. I am someone that likes to leave my phone at home um, on walks with the dog. I, I don't like being a slave to my phone. That's a hardship for me. It's not impossible to work with, but it's, it's, it's like people are calling you on nights and weekends. You're showing homes on weekends, um, those types of things. So I think that real estate is going to be complimentary to me as long as I have boundaries and not taking on too much. So, you know, next year, if it could be five or six escrows, I think I could manage that with YouTube and reselling and it won't, it won't take too much of a hit. I think I also have the YouTube space where I'm getting people calling me. So I'm not making, I'm not getting referrals and paying referral fees to services, which is part of my commission. I'm not uh, making cold calls. I'm not knocking on doors. I am sincerely just getting calls inbound from the content I've put out. And I have plans to keep putting out content. Right now, my goal is, is about one real estate video a month. Um, just to keep my channel afloat and keep me searchable. But, you know, there's, I'm in a small town where there's not many people that really can navigate the YouTube space. And I'm not saying I'm a pro, I'm not, but I've learned quite a bit with my other two channels. And I also know that a lot of real estate agents want to do these productions, like pay someone to do a production, when in reality, you just want people to know that, that you're a trustworthy, honest person and you don't need a production to do that. Um, so because I have some YouTube experience, it kind of helps me with my real estate channel and that generates leads for me. So because I had that guy um, that bought a house from my, my old agent, uh, I was given the, the upfront knowledge that maybe I could get other people to find me on YouTube who might want to use me as an agent. And that kind of solved that problem. But if you don't have a way, like if you don't know a whole bunch of people moving, buying and selling, or maybe builders who want, you know, you want to connect with, or if you don't want to cold call or constantly do self-promotion, pay for promotion or marketing, uh, real estate is hard <laughs> as far as generating leads. So I don't know if it's really, I would say most people 
like the idea of it, kind of like they like the idea of reselling, but it's a lot harder than it looks from the outside. So I think it's a very complimentary thing. I'm about out of time. Um, there we go. <laughs> um, I think it's a very complimentary thing because right now when I get real estate calls, I can still take some of those and I'm taking photos or I'm you know, out showing houses and I can still accept an offer. Um, or when I am about to go show houses, I can take my shipping with me into town. You know, so it's very complimentary in that both kind of can, can kind of uh, flow um, because, yeah, because they're not like, I don't have to show up to a job from nine to five every day and I don't have any flexibility. They're both flexible so they can kind of work together. But I just don't think a lot of people would would like the lead generation aspect or even like the constant communication with people, you know? Um, so yeah, so that's kind of it. I'm going to take a break. Dog, she's back there. Dog, was that, do you got up from your bed? Do you want to go outside or do you want to sit right there and we can talk to them? Let's do that. What are you doing? Do you want to tell them about your life? Huh? Do I have a piece of chicken for you, right? I know, can you sit? Very good girl, right? All right, so I'll start with the dog since I know a lot of you guys ask about her updates. So we are almost at a month of her taking medications for seizures and so far so good. Now, technically speaking, she had a seizure the first time with my dog sitter about a month and a half before her second seizure that I'm aware of. Obviously, I do leave her here at times when I'm out showing houses and stuff like that. So there could have been something in between. But to my knowledge, it was about a month and a half between the two. Um, the easiest way to give her medications, I think I've said this, is, has been cream cheese. I still like to mix in, um, I know, did I just say that word? I still like to mix in um, occasionally some hot dogs or, um, but so far, no complaints other than it's just, I have a phone reminder twice a day uh, to give her meds. And there's been a couple times where I'm like, oh gosh, I've got to get home. Uh, so we're working things out, but so far she's been good. Uh, one of the things that I tried to do in October, so October, I set some goals. I think I shared on Instagram of like how much I wanted to list and I wanted to get into an escrow and I wanted to walk the dog every day. I wanted to do yoga two days a week. Uh, like I just set some goals and I think I hit most of them. I only listed, I think about 200 items in October. And, um, so I didn't hit my 300 goal and, uh, I did not do two days of a week of yoga. It's just hard cause it's, you know, not close to me. And so, um, trying to juggle cert certain classes, like there's very few classes there that it's just been harder to get there. I'm still friends with people at yoga and I do try to go when I can, but it's, it's just not working out to be as often as I would hope, but I have been walking the dog every day, even on snowy days. So boo, do you want to come sit over here? You're going to sit in the sun. So, uh, so yeah, walking her every day, even when it's snowy and cold and windy, uh, has been a great break for me with all of this, these changes. So I'm very appreciative of that just because I think it's probably just as good for me as it is for her. Um, but yeah, that's basically the dog update. Um, I changed her food, different flavor. She seems to like that. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if dogs really notice, but, uh, yeah. Um, what else? I have not had as much friend time. I did go camping last month and I do want to go camping at some point this month. Um, so that's still a goal is to try and do one camping trip each month. But I am, I, I am trying to get together with some friends soon because I haven't seen some of them in a bit. And it's just, I feel like it's just that busy time of year. You know, I'm already done with my Christmas shopping for the most part. I have a couple little things to get, but, um, you know, it's just, it's crazy how quickly this, this time is flying by. Um, so yeah, I, I think I could make some improvements, but right now I'm just trying to get a couple of these houses sold and start the new year with a lot of optimism, some good balance in life. 
uh, I decided to extend my sober October. And I know for a lot of people, it's like, if you just don't care, but for me, I think I've always enjoyed wine. And as an adult, that's just been a social thing is to go meet a, a friend at a restaurant or a bar and like have a glass and catch up and, uh, even just sitting at home and relaxing and unwinding. And so I did sober October, which I've done before and I've done dry Januaries, but this year I was like, well, maybe I can extend it a little bit. And I don't, it doesn't really phase me other than you realize like how much that was involved, like how much of a relaxing wine, like wind down it was for me. Um, and just trying to replace that with some better things. Like I'm still cooking my meals, which I enjoy. And that gives me a good break. Um, I'm drinking a lot more tea at night. I have found some really good non-alcoholic beer, um, not sponsored, <laughs> but it's this one favorite one is athletic is what it's called. And it tastes so much like regular beer. And I just, again, I just like if I'm sitting with friend and they're having a glass of something, I just, I like, I like that social aspect. So it doesn't even have to be like the numbing aspect, but that's also the other thing is, you know, it was a rough year for me. I turned 40, I lost my dad you know, you just start using those things as almost like a form of numbing. And I just could see that I needed to take a pause and reflect and just get balanced. And so I'm not saying this in, in any other way other than we're all on our own journey. I just happened to share some of my journey here. Um, you know, the dog, I share my camping on the second channel. I share my real estate stuff. I mean, a lot of my life is shared. And so I do try to be somewhat honest of, you know, this is just a time for me to be self-reflective and try to make some healthier decisions and choices. So that's that, um, real estate. So my first payday was yesterday, pretty much. I mean, I have invested about $4,000. That is the cost of the real estate school which was online, but you still have to pay for it. You know, like the books and the class, the online school. And then you have to pay for your real estate license, the test, those costs. And then once you're licensed, you have to find a broker and you have to pay association fees. You have to pay fees to get access to lock boxes, to get access to the MLS, which is where you list people list houses. Um, so there's just a lot of fees I, on average. I think it's about $2,000 per year in real estate fees for every real estate agent. Um, it's various different locations cause there are slightly different, whatever, but for my area, it's about 2000 a year. So, uh, with everything so far that I paid, it's been about $4,000. So my, um, uh, like I said, the payout for real estate is usually about two to 3%. My hair's actually looking decent today. I haven't flat ironed it in a while. I usually do waves, but I got it cut and I didn't really like how it was laying, but I actually think it's okay straight again. I don't know. Do you guys ever get that way where you get a haircut and then you have to wait like a month before it feels normal or it looks normal? Like it almost has to grow out a little bit. How did we get here? Talking about hair. But, um, so I, I mean, I, I think it's, it's pretty easy for me to share real estate commissions as far as, so it depends on who you go with your broker, what contract you sign, how much you get paid out, what percentage. Most new agents are going to need help because even though I went and I got my license, even though I'm smart, I've gone through a home purchase. I know some things, every real estate transaction will probably have new things that pop up and you want someone that you can go to, to ask for, you know, answers to some of those things. So a lot of new agents will have a higher commission split than maybe more established agents. So a common commission slip, uh, split with a broker, meaning if I get two and a half percent of commission on a home, let's say the home I just sold, $460,000 was the sale price. I got two and a half percent commission on that sale price. Um, I have a broker split. So basically I pay a percentage to my broker, which I'm required to have a broker in California um, for legal reasons, but also, I don't know, yeah, legal reasons. <laughs> so most agents, when they sign on with a broker, they negotiate their split. Some people are 50-50 in the beginning. I don't know who, but I've read that that happens. Some people are 60-40. The most common that I've seen and talked to when people start is a 70-30 split. So 70% of the commission 
is what's paid out to me and 30% is paid to a the broker. So when you take, I don't, I don't know the exact math of what 2.5% of 460,000, but it's basically like 12,000 and change. So then I, my commission split 70, 30, 30% 30 goes to my broker. And then there's also a couple little like administrative franchise fees. But for the most part, I kind of calculate about 65% of my commission is what's paid out to me. Now, this first commission check is going straight to the IRS. This is what's paying for prepayment for my taxes this year. So I should be getting about $8,000 for this first home sale. And all of that is going directly to the IRS. Not one penny is going to go to anything else. That's just because that's a prepayment for all of my businesses um, for my next tax season. And that'll just give me a really good starting place. I'll probably, since I am doing a little bit better this year as a whole, I'll, I'll probably do about a fourth of every future home sale, a fourth of what I make will go directly to the IRS. Um, I, I ha my dad used to be my CPA. Uh, I got a new CPA uh, a few months ago. And so we kind of talked things through. Everyone's different, every state's different. Find a CPA, I don't know what to say. Um, but for me, I'm gonna do the prepayment minimum, which is what I paid last year. And then I'm gonna put the rest into savings so that I have extra cushion for when tax time comes around so that I'm able to pay the IRS for anything additional. Taxes is not a fun thing to talk about, but when you're self-employed, no one's taking it out for you. So it's just something that has to be thought of. So that's the good thing about the homes is a fourth of each home that I plan on selling after this first one will go, will go to my savings account for taxes. Uh, so I'm dividing it up into fours uh, because it's not paying any of my bills, but a fourth will go to taxes, the IRA, or go to my tax account. Um, and then a fourth will go to my savings account. So same account for the most part. But so if you take this next house, uh, it's a million dollar purchase price. So, and it's only a 2% commission. <laughs> I, these are things that are negotiated by the seller's agent, not by me. So uh, that is a $20,000 commission. Obviously, I have a broker split. So after that split, I cannot do math. Uh, what is that? 1400 14000 Whatever. I think it's around 14 13000 Whatever. Uh, that I'm going to divide up into four. So a fourth of that is going to go into my tax uh, account. A fourth of that is going to go into my savings account. And then a fourth is going to go into my... IRA account, my retirement account. And then a fourth is going to go to a home project. So that's what I'm most excited about with the real estate stuff is there's going to be a fourth of every home uh, sold that will go to more my personal and that's going to be home projects and travel. So depending on how next year goes, there is a good chance I could maybe go on an international trip. It has been a long time since I've gone on one, basically since I bought a home and I knew I would probably be taking a break. But uh, there's a couple home projects I want to do, one being finish my fence, one fourth of it still needs to be done, but that's a uh, substantial distance. So uh, hopefully I can get that done by the uh, end of this year with this home that's in escrow. And then next year, I'd really, before summer, like to get an air conditioner. I got a quote for that. It's gonna be about 7,500, I believe, is what the quote was. Um, and it varies house to house. It's a mini split. It's what works for my A-frame house. Um, but I am hopeful I'll be able to do that if I can maybe sell twice the amount next year as I did this year. So, and then once I hit a certain point in my savings that I uh, that I feel most comfortable with as far as just having enough savings for both taxes and um, cushion, like how many months, you know, they say have three to six months of living expenses in your savings account. It's like every time I hear that, I'm like, who has that? I mean, people do. But that's that's my goal next year is to get my savings bulked up for just in case and more cushion. And then hopefully I'll be able to have a little bit of extra change to be able to go on one, maybe only a week long international trip. Um, I have some things that I'm thinking of, but leave the dog with the dog sitter and go somewhere. I just think that would be so much fun. So that's kind of how I plan on breaking things up. Um, everyone's different. Everyone's financial situation is different. I feel like I have been struggling as a full-time reseller for four years now. Um, I mean, the last year, again, not really considering myself full time, but it has still been a substantial part of the income coming in. And it's hard. 
and I guess maybe that's why I wanted to make this video is not to complain about anything because I don't, I, there are some people that can kill it. And I just think for my personality, I just think reselling is just too monotonous. Um, and I just didn't enjoy the stress and anxiety and I didn't enjoy um, the potential for me because again, I can't source as much. I don't want employees and I just didn't, I didn't like the line I was going down. So what real estate is offering me right now is with some additional work shifting time um, and navigating that space, I'm hopefully going to be able to contribute more to my retirement, my savings, and also have some leftover money each year for some of these projects that no one else is paying for. Um, you know, life is expensive. Homeownership is great. <laughs> but I mean, I have cracked tile over here. I would like to finish my fence. I have some walls that need to be painted. Um, there's just always things like that. And I'm just, I'm really optimistic about this next year, um, both personally and with work. And I'll continue to share it here on YouTube. Um, it's, I think this is, I, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, it's, it's coming off of COVID. It's coming off of, you know, 40 isn't that big of a deal. It's just not. I feel exactly the same as before. But looking at this next 10 years of what do I want to accomplish? And I don't set like crazy goals of, you know, I just, I want to make improvements. I want more time with family and friends. I want to be able to travel. I want to be able to live in a comfortable house. And, um, you know, that stuff requires work and, but I'm also, I'm excited about some of the work, you know, I, I, I get to give keys to some people who are first time homeowners from LA, uh, in a couple of days, they closed yesterday, but I get to give them keys and I've got a little welcome get gift and I'm just, there's something so great about how life is progressing for me. So that's it. The dog is over here snoozing. So I'm going to let her out, but be sure to hit the thumbs up. If you liked this chatty work with me, I can't wait to read your comments and I'll be back soon, probably with a bins haul. I've got a big one that's already photographed. So I'll be back soon. Bye.